<laughs> stolen away from S4. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's definitely. But I don't love there. it. Yeah. Hey. So, so it'll be an ice ice tiny again, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it is carry tiny, empty tiny, and uh, ice 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 mm. will go on the underlord. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's your drafts, boys. Yeah. That was a, an interesting draft. We've got our answer to the arc warden, which was basically ban it. Has it influenced which way you'll go? We'll start with the send. PSJ. I'm going to be a, a, a ballsy pick. Okay. I'm feeling... I do feel similar to you, but I think... Ten the Dazzle is up versus remaining. Underlord in lane. It might just get too rough. And then later their team fight is like... Five tiny stun into remaining. the egg, and they have center ult I, I think Aegis should be able to. Honestly, that Morpher's bottom mid, though. That's the biggest thing that I'm <laughs> tough on, isn't it? I'm gonna go with... Uh, yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> EG, EG. <laughs> I mean, it's on point today. Yeah. Let's just do EG. Yeah, oh, we'll we just tie a young hand next time to do all the sound effects for the show. Like, uh, I don't like the... Lion as a hero, but I think this Dazzle's so good versus Underlord. No, I don't know this Morphing versus Marana. I mean... Production's gonna put EG up for me no matter what anyway. Well, of course they are. I'm I mean, gonna go it, EG, it, yeah. Yeah, it makes no They're gonna do it so. anyway, right now. Of course. I mean, the former EG player, the official owner of the fan club, mm. has gone EG. We're really shocked here in the studio. Uh, time to head over to our commentators. I uh, wonder what their thoughts are on game number two. We asked, gents, what do they do about the Ark Warden? They said, uh, uh, they said ban <laughs> we it. We are here. Yeah, you, there you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they said ban it, and they were right. We have got the Ark Warden banned, but have Fnatic had the better draft, do you think, this time? I'm worried about the timing of the Morphling versus Terrorblade. We've seen what that Terrorblade can do early, break these games wide open before the Morph really comes online. I I'm favoring EG here. Mm. You're into okay. it. Right? I'm into yeah, it, dude. I mean, it's, it's a dazzle. dazzle. I'm, I'm yeah, feeling, exactly. boys, I'm feeling some NA bias. Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah, I've got like an NA panel out of bar one. No, I, I see. I'm going with BSJ. I'll take Fnatic. <laughs> I'm into it. Okay. Yeah. I'm biased <laughs> towards that NA man. Uh, so I'll okay. agree with that. All right. All right. All right. Good stuff. Take it away, gents. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you very thank much, Paul. All right, Trent. Um, so, do you think you, you believe in this Underlord? You're not worried about him uh, falling victim to the I, dazzle I think the in the lanes, lane? I think Pi brought up a really good point. Yeah. Um, if depending on the lanes, but I also at the same time, if we're talking lanes, mid lanes to be the one to watch. So take us into it. Come and see, and uh, find out how Abed will do here, because indeed he will be heading to the mid lane. And the, okay. So the question is, you're talking about this dazzle maybe being in lane versus the Underlord, but maybe he might have to come to like the mid lane too, and they just try and bully Abed early. So very curious to see what the setup's going to be here. Yeah, me too. Um, I think EG just have a draft that fits this really nice tempo. They can play around this metamorphosis very well. You've got S4 on the Centaur, who will be able to get a reasonably timed Blink Dagger this game, I think, and kind of play that initiation role, break up these fights. I think Lion and Dazzle are also a great support duo because they really make up for what the other one lacks. Dazzle has great saves, some good damage, but True. not really much in the terms of control, and Lion, well, he's all about control. Yeah, so. control and damage, he, he's got that, that's for sure. So that'll be uh, one thing Ovid will have to watch out for. You guys have all seen some games of the Sun Strikes just kind of blasting and morphling away in the jungle, depending on the vision. It's felt like EG had been winning the vision back so far in this series, taking a lot of the map over with wards in game number one. If they can do that again here, especially in the earlier parts when that line hits six, you might just see that morphling evaporate very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yep, can definitely happen. Ooh, a poison touch from Fly connects on to the Bane. I'm going to try to run away here. We'll see how many right clicks Fly can get in. Maximizes damage. Does force out a Tango. Bounty runes. Going to be two apiece. Even spread so far. Fly also still hanging around in the area. Maybe going to go for a bit of a courier snipe, but uh, there is some Radiant Vision. They didn't see the Dazzle move back towards the bottom lane, so this might get spotted out here if you attempt something. Still hanging on to that Observer Ward, maybe thinking about a deep ward placement. Yeah, he's just going to chill mid. Once the Bane's there, and this is what we kind of expected. Dual lane mid. Now look at this, though, Trent. Level 1 in Feeble on this Bane. Not something you see too often anymore. Uh, garbage. It's really bad compared to how good it used to be. Yeah. I mean, I remember bringing it up on day one, and you slapped me around a little bit about <laughs> how bad it was, and uh, we're actually going to see it here. Is there any merit to it? I mean, do you think this is objectively the wrong choice, or is, is it the option in I this particular I'm, lane matchup? Shamil just got, like, a last hit with it on. Abed's not even playing near the Murano to get the nice wall to there, so... And once the levels stack up, it definitely gets a little bit better, but level one... Like, he's still just getting last hits here. So, yeah. like, what's the point? I'm... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm kind of asking you for the merits on this one. He's arrowing the range creep, too. Like, this feels like quite a waste. 
And even Crit now rotating oh, in, one, pulling Finally. some of that uh, attention from jabs. Not able to keep that uptime. But uh, as much as I'm, I'm flaming and everything, it changes a lot at uh, like level three. Get the second point in there, up the duration by half, <laughs> like a 50% increase from eight to 12. Pretty big deal. Other drawbacks though, right? That means you're not going to have these points in brain sap, so Bane not going to be able to do as much damage. Or you're sacrificing the point nightmare. Obviously uh, not ideal. Look out. Crit missed the stun. He missed the stun, and then he missed the chat wheel onto whoops as well, and hit careful. <laughs> so double misplay there from Crit. Very disappointing here. Yep. Uh, this bottom lane, we are just looking at it, but it's uh, the battle of the big boys. The two tanky off laners. Should be a pretty boring farm fest down here. <laughs> Indeed. Woo! Hot stuff. It's hard to find someone that is larger in lane than Centaur, but Underlord is certainly that. Yes. Big old boy. Look he's, at him. He's got the Huge. Bill. So, continue our dual lane mid, and uh, Sumail still even with this Morphling, both in last hits and denies. Really not a significant advantage either way. And moving up on this top lane. Yeah, Abed's looking to just block the range creep arrow. He's just constantly positioning. Sumail can't find yeah. an angle onto it. Actually, stun, arrow, follow up, Abed. Probably not going to go down here, but a lot of pressure coming his way. Very low on regen. Only one tango left after this healing cell. Yeah, and Javs doesn't really have any more mana either. He spammed out so many of these enfeebles. Yeah, it does have another clarity, but yeah, it's a fair point. Not the biggest mana pool on Bane and Feeble. 95 mana, even at level 1. Yeah, it's just different in the whole trade war, too. So now Ice Slice has come in behind the tower. So he's, he's trying to keep up while also staying in experience range of his tower, where it's tanking full waves. So that'll work out pretty well for him. But now S4 just draws the wave further back from the tower and plays some Axe Dota. Yeah. First point in return. Actually able to do this pretty effectively. When you're talking about like what's Fly gonna do this game, he hasn't really had to do all too much. I mean, he's getting some great pulls up top. There was no block there. Uh, Fly will get scattered out there, but thankfully DJ stayed on the other side of the cliff. Fire Spirit to use by the Phoenix. Nice yeah, arrow lane. lane. Is this gonna be our first blood? Abed in a lot of trouble. Does use that Fairy Fire. Able to stay alive on just Ooh. a sliver of HP. No first blood drawn, but a lot of pressure on this board. Yeah, really nice positioning there from Abed, where he like moved back towards them to kind of keep Sumail planted under the tower, taking all that damage, threatening him. Mail back up top. Low. MP getting pushed back. Poison touch getting reset here. Arteezy needs one more, and he'll find it. Oh man, he did the math on that one. Turned around before it even hit. I knew he'd have it. Not tank the tower. 16% slow on that poison touch makes it pretty easy for that Terra Blade to chase him down. EG will be the ones to strike first, and that'll find an advantage up here in the top lane. Tough stuff for the Tiny. Yeah, and Sumel, though, he's going to do the whole run back home in the mid lane. So finally all this harass starting to pay off. Abed will get a little bit of an advantage here in the CS battle. Everybody back in the fan lane. Now they're having a little bit of a party. This isn't a shrine, guys. You can use it individually. Feels like some pretty free up lane for the most MP is going to get chased down again. They don't even need the meta. The poison touch is just too much. But Arteezy goes down before MP dies. That's got to be a blunder. Yeah, that tower armor is a bit too much there. I guess knowing he'd have to commit probably just more rotations plus the Phoenix. But well, that works out pretty well for MP. Very much so. And Fly even getting credit for that kill. So great for the Dazzle, but position one Terror Blade. Not ideal. Bounty runes now coming out. EG able to grab two, maybe even three as Fly charges in. DJ can't get there in time. Now takes a poison touch to the face. Does not have an Icarus dive, but Fly himself does not have much. No shallow grave, not enough mana for the TP. Looking for a deny on Roche. Is Roche going to help him out? Oh no, the attack speed's slow. <laughs> get the aggro. That was heartbreaking. <laughs> Mid lane now, and you see the stun on the jabs as he tries to rotate through. Sumail jumps forward. They've almost got the damage here, and that last arrow will have enough despite the enfeeble. But Crit also goes down one for one trade in the mid lane. Both cores picking up a kill. Bit of an XP lead there for Abed to the zoning him all the way back to the base. The value of fire spirits. I tell ya. Better bring a health already there on S4. Yeah, Ice Ice not even needing one, though. Bottom lane still pretty even trade. Ice 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 is getting the better of it. Uh, level 7 just as S4 uh, hits level 6 now. And although they're contesting for the top run, it's going to be a haste on bottom that the teams will be racing towards here. By trying to throw some damage in mid there, but if Crit gets this haste rune, which... Uh, 
I think Dyer's they give the bottle to him. We'll see if that's what they opt for. And for yeah, he's being spotted by Ward anyway, so the good thing is that play would not have worked out very well. And that means Smell just hold the haste room. Back up top, MP, pretty aggressive with his positioning, looking to cut this wave. His creeps pushing in now, alongside a siege creep. Actually, a lot of damage on this tower now, already about half HP. They jump into RTZ, and it's a dead Terrorblade, just like that. BSJ can always spot a game where a Terrorblade's gonna feed a lot, you know? He's been there, he's experienced it. That's why I trusted him on this matchup for Fnatic. That's, that's why I knew that they could do this. He's Take down RTZ early. This is not the Arc Warden game. No, definitely not. And it's stopping this Terrorblade from setting that tempo that I was so worried about against the Morphling, but th this mid matchup has really just been a, a battle of keeping both cores down. Sumail and Abeg have lowest of the cores right now, neither of them really having a great economy to start things off. Yeah, I guess you could say it's kind of favoring EG, because, you know, in like the 1v1, you're kind of expecting Morphling Top. to outfarm a little. Why? It's going to be another one, perhaps, for the Tiny. Does get off the Shallow Grave, but the Fire Spirit Burn, it's going to last one more tick and flies down. Another one up for DJ. Five to three. Fnatic taking the lead Ooh, for now. Abed. Crit now in the mid lane. Abed jumps in. Now level six, able to turn into the Marana. Arrow Ooh, flies through as the nice. Nightmare gets used. And that's going to be the Dapta to finish off Crit. Abed not going to be able to pursue against the Haste Rune that's since been used by Sumail. Couple levels of the Bane Marana combo working out here. <laughs> mm hmm. Save versus the arrow, not exactly the way these two heroes usually work together, but they'll take it. Now they're battling for that top rune here too, as likewise he had Jab running an S4. So Smoke up for EG. Oh, yeah. It's Sumail who gets it up top though, so they killed Jazz, but now DD Sumail still has to move back from that Morphling. He's able to go back to farm, or rather to uh, go into his uh, attribute shift. Vanguard first Dyer's item for S4. Lead it on the Centaur. The big boy getting even bigger. And they don't have anyone up top, though, as you'll see on your picture. And picture MP takes the tower in another tiny game. He ended up godlike in the last one. We'll see if he can find that here once again. Targets to eliminate early on the fights. I mean, you got double squishy supports here in the Dazzle and the Lion. There's certainly opportunities. Yeah, no doubt. King potentially for a go in the mid lane. Lion not able to get there in time and set much up. He's and he already has his whole game planned out here. <laughs> That's quick buy. <laughs> Got his okay. blink ready, his echo saber, maybe a shadow blade. Perhaps not exactly sure which tool is going to be the best in a game like this. The Moran on your team, or rather on the enemy team. Still a great start for the Tiny. And if this keeps up, he will have a very well-timed blink dagger. Yule yeah. Scepter going to be the first choice for Ice Ice Ice. Interesting build. Yeah, I don't see that one too often on the Underlord. Soul Ring into the Yule Scepter, no less. Kind of gives him a, a self-purge, which is a little bit nice. I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit unusual, the movement speed. It's kind of like an all-around item. Maybe think about like those more ore-based items, like the Greaves and stuff. I would have thought like a Crimson Guard might it's, be a good choice here yeah, against the Terror Blade. It's, a very, like, it's like he's playing Necrophos, kind of, I feel like. Mm. But it's just another element of control. Just uh, maybe he can kind of go deep in the fights. He can yules up the dazzle or something, and allow them to focus down the TP. A couple of nice tools he can do with it. Maybe dodge out arrows too. Interrupt TPs. Yep. Dyer's top top. Things quieting down a little bit as we get close to that 10 minute mark. Some bounties soon to spawn. It's like EG will control that bottom set and Fnatic will control nice on top. Stun. We'll see a stun on the morph laying. Sumail able to bottle up that regen rune. Phoenix pops the ultimate, might be enough to get crit, but no, oh, he makes it out in time. Compliments of the Moonlight Shadow. A nice call there, just ditching, not worth risking anything. Trying to kill the egg. S4's got a stampede. Could be some potential for a go if EG want to force things against this Morphling. They've certainly got the numbers advantage here they in the mid. They need crit though, they want that excellent stun. There's the Stampede, they jump in, Arrow does connect on Abed, but he is morphing, they just don't quite have the damage to finish him off, they need a little bit more, and they've got it. S4 gets the last hit, now EG backing up, looking to reset, they know there isn't a Supernova, but the Pit of Malice locks S4 in place, they bring down Sumail, and it looks like S4 will go down as the Grave expires. Two for Fnatic in exchange for their Morphling. Yeah, perfect wrap there from MP, caught them uh, all coming back onto their own side of the ramp there. Here's that fight for Fnatic, so... Greedy go there, yes they get Abed, but in the end it looks like it's going to be uh, Fnatic with the victory on that one. As they can start pressuring the tower with the catapult and Abed's coming right back. Crit looking for a stun here. 
And we'll connect Both jabs. Should be dead. So level two poison from the Dazzle. Yeah, that'll be enough to bring him down. Abed turns back into the Marana, but can't do much about it. The only uh, silver lining for EG after that two for one trade is that was space for uh, RTZ to keep farming. That whole time he was just committed down bottom. His net worth now looking very good, surpassing the tiny and nipping at the heels. That disgusting. Yeah, ice is ice. I mean, he, the heat map for him is very simple this match. One spot, basically, he came mid for that one engagement, but other than that, he's just been chilling down bottom, trading blows back and forth with S4, but now it's uh, Arteezy here. Very scary, like Arteezy, like low HP, you know what this guy wants to do. He's trying to find a real quick, easy sunder onto this Underlord, but uh, he'll even take a salve up here next. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Gonna cut the creep wave a little bit, gets that level 10 talent. Kind of pressure into this tower, but Underlord so good. Oh, mid lane, they these pushes. up our Morphling here. Follow up arrow from Sumail. I don't think they'll have the damage. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Crit uh, does finally have his ultimate, now level 7. Was short on mana there, but opening up some potential kill opportunities for this Morphling. MP still committed up top, though. He's got a siege creep, and I think will just let this one go. Free tier 2 will go the way of Fnatic at 12 minutes. Dyer's top tower has fallen. And they're going to try to play mid here, but there's an Observer and a Sentry placed down here, plus Jabs just backing up Abed, kind of baiting something out here, maybe hoping that Abed's going to try, or rather that uh, Sumail will try a Moonlight Shadow play with the Arcane Rune. Really tempting. Uh, also Bane now level 6, so Fiend's Grip in the mix. Blink Dagger up on Tiny, could be the reveal. Find a quick pick with it. So some pretty good wards down from EG in the enemy territory. Might be able to yeah, scout out this potential movement. Doing some kind of weird plays. They're like cutting waves, flies down, warding and hiding in tree lines. I say Sice holding that tower for the longest time. And with him there and Abed in the mid lane, MP pushing out the top, they haven't been able to get any objectives so far from EG, but they will find Jax. Once again, easy hex initiation for crit. And of course, plenty of follow up. Moonlight Shadow now. Fake back, it looks like, from EG. Just not the kill that uh, they need, though. They want one of these cores. Radiance All right, slow down what's happening here. Attack. But much like the last time, it is still Arteezy. Farming away, doing the Dire Triangle. Getting some uh, camps done here. And maybe a smoke now. The head bomb. Oh, Arteezy's going to pop the meta, so he's not going anywhere. And the last little smoke while the meta's been popped. So just trying to make some more space. Uh, S4 is closing in on his Blink Dagger. Just a couple hundred gold away. A lot of key item timings for the evil geniuses, but who will they find here? They're going to bump right into DJ. There's a Hex, but MP comes right back in, jumps onto Sumail. Sumail will live through the burst as the Stampede gets used. They also force out the Supernova. Fnatic will not be able to find a counter kill. But EG were the aggressors that smoked in. They'll be repelled back to their own tier 2 in the mid. Kind of surprised MP's only level 9 with how much he's been playing kind of alone this game. I guess just uh, spreading a lot of that with DJ, who's also level 9 on the Phoenix. A little surprising. He's had the Tomes, too, but just one more level, and that's killing Rana. Oh, Fly drops down the Sentry Ward, reveals jabs, but it'll be the end of it. MP catches him there. Probably a Tier 1 tower. Ready to go in favor of Fnatic. Dire structures are fortified. EG do use the glitch, though. I like how Ice Ice rotates, even when it looks like very secure. They're just trying not to give any of the advantage away that they have right now. Because they know that they're on the clock here. Uh, versus the TB, at least a little bit. Like, obviously, even more playing in the game looks pretty good, but Crit is caught here. Thanks, Ice Dice coming in here. Still has the Yules for an and one if anyone comes too close. Yeah, we uh, just saw against the Centaur. One of the cool things with the Yules is you can drop the Pit of Malice, Yules them in the pit, they come back down, and you'll almost always get that second stun. So, yeah. or, well, disable. Root. That's what it is. Yeah, Finally got to definitely it. Definitely one of the more useful parts about having the animal on the hero. So, it's kind of cool. Maybe not a game changer, but seeing some of that utility. Very small lead for Fnatic, though. Only about 1k net worth is their favor. Bottom tower this Terrorblade continues to Radiance lead the farming charge. Yasha now coming out for Arteezy. S4, bottom, S4. Fiend's Grip probably going to come out after this. That Yule Scepter sets things up. Arrow will actually connect on jabs. S4 living a bit longer than planned. Wow. Fly gets there in time with a shallow grave. They'll turn on to Ice Ice Ice. Jabs also goes down. S4 blinks and dodges the avalanche too. The Moonlight Shadow, he might survive. They're looking for him. They can't quite find him. He does not have a TP scroll, but he's got a lot of friends nearby. They're going to rotate into the shrine. It's already been used. Limited detection. The courier does get its immunity. It'll survive as they jump in onto the Phoenix. S4 is ready. Down. He wants to go back in. He's so low here. Oh, oh, but a beautiful setup, setup for the arrow. arrow. Move into the arrow. It's going to be four down. EG find the advantage. 
Jeez, I cannot believe that long range arrow to stop the fiend script and the grave comes in from fly. They're just finding every spell on point there from EG, despite it looking like a great start. Perfect from Fnatic timing. and a free pick onto a centaur. Absolutely perfect timing. That would have been a victory if S4 had died there and they still got that trade. The fact that S4 is able to live yeah. makes this so ridiculous. I mean, and again, this comes down to that vision that they laid down earlier. Like, they see no one else's rotating. They're like, yeah, this is just two heroes, guys. So, was that a mistake, you think, to use the Yules there? The, the Bane wanted to Fiend's Grip to start things off, and that actually gave S4 that extra little bit of time he needed to survive. Well, that certainly didn't pay off. And then, yeah, that blink from S4, too. And just continuing that, that vision, helping out, right? These supports rotate through, or at least the support DJ and then MP, and they're just able to hunt them down because of this premeditated vision. And the lack of vision. EG kind of fading with the courier a little bit, saying, hey, we're still here. They knew they were there, but you could tell there just weren't options. MP didn't know where to run. You gotta kind of love when players like stick around in a fight like that, too, even when they're like 10% HP, because they can create moments like that. But uh, Arteezy up on the high ground, farming some ancients. Smoke on the way in. Fnatic, hungry for blood, looking for some vengeance after that lost fight. Only going to find a couple of Terror Blade illusions, not what they were hoping for. Now the TP up top from Arteezy to continue that farming pattern. Fnatic make the rotation mid. Sumail and S4 could fall victim to this. S4 scouts things out, does not get the blink off in time. Tiny combo, Fiend Grip, the arrow across the way. This time the Bane just cancels the grip early. Centaur able to live, Stampede to secure. Yeah, this guy, 2k HP, not enough for Tiny to target. And this is uh, some of the questions about this like very early Tiny pick. It does give you uh, choices for cores that can actually survive, and yet the one core they saw was the Centaur, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you have time to respond to the draft, but they picked the Tiny into it. Dyer's middle tower. Not even a hood or a casual cloak on S4. So that's just some good old-fashioned Centaur girth right there. Yeah, Vanguard health, that's about it. Now a rotation back bottom from Fnatic. It's pretty shocking this towers of the HP it is, honestly. I feel because Ice has just been playing down here the entire time and has not been able to get the damage on this tower. It's been on the defensive though. It seems like most of his time has been hiding in that tree line, defending his own tower rather than uh, pushing out himself. Yeah, I mean it also comes down to the fact that when he was like taking control of the lane, he rotated mid to help his team push the towers. So I like that because it was helping to secure pushes that honestly they probably would have got anyway without him. But he was there to back up in case there was a return play from EG, and it worked out a couple times. Sometimes he wasn't needed, but those are the moments where you could have been a bit greedier and maybe had this tower down by now. Interesting choice from EG. They walk across the river and then smoke on the high ground. They'll jump on the jabs, blink over, right into arrow, another alley-oop to secure the kill on the Bane. Now Moonlight Shadow for the Exodus. They've got dust this time. Fnatic want to punish this. They will catch Sumail. Abed morphs into the Marana, misses the arrow, trying to pursue, but nowhere for Sumail to go. It'll be a one for one. Yeah, those heroes were also dusted up, so no chance of sticking around to try and help Sumail. Now they're going to instantly underlord the bottom. DJ's going to step out of it. He does not want to go and join the party. Saying that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of fire mid here, guys. I'm trying to finish up Sheev's guard, so give me some time here. And crit. He looking for the catch on the crit. Good yeah. time to buy a blink dagger. He pays some dividends there. He does get caught by the Pit of Malice, but. No vision, Fnatic not able to pursue into the tree line. Feel confident about it. Arteezy still been very quiet, Trent. Pulling ahead, now 2k above the uh, Morphling. Just about to have that BKB picked up. Uh, as well as level 15, so some extra health. in him that much harder to kill. That's a very similar uh, draft, this game, from both teams. I think uh, we got like a super hard one, right? And this Terrorblade versus the Morphling. Then we got our kind of like bursty, falling off kind of cores in the Marana and the Tiny. Bottom. Not able to get the deny, but Crypt links in. Hex onto the Underlord. This is a little bit risky, I think, for EG. There's the Yule Scepter onto the Marana as MP rotates in. Sumail getting very low, tries to leap off the map, but not going to be successful. On the other side, Jabs does go down, so it's a one for one, but advantage for Fnatic as they pick up a core. Yeah, nice use of the Yule set there. As you saw, second he comes back out of the Yules, just stuck. Can't Great get anything the going Marana. with the leaps. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But uh, yeah, just the way these drafts are similar, I think uh, it's all about who gets this lead in terms of these first Aegises, uh, because it is a Morphling versus a TV. I mean, theoretically, if Abed can find that correct morph, he is just better terribly. Right? He's going to be doing more damage, and then he gets all the benefits of the Metamorphosis too. Able to cast that spell, despite it basically being the ultimate for Terrorblade. Yeah. The wonders of the hero. It'd be great having a hero with two ultimates. Dark Wells. Quite good, yeah. Yeah, she is. Centaur. 
Denied S4. It's going to be a quick pick from Fnatic. Nice pick up there, though it is a pretty big rotation. <laughs> it's a circle from DJ on the minimap. Just angle in here. This is where I would like to play, please. Somewhere around this area. Yep, I think they're farmed. I think we need some wards. That would be great. Please, is the message there. Radiant uh, doing quite well at the event. I believe overall the victories. Now, mind you, first pick I think is doing a little bit better. But uh, Radiant team, of course, the reason why it feels so good is that uh, you're able to control the Roche Pit a lot easier. You wow. just kind of play on this part of the map way more. As Fnatic move into the Roche Pit, Trent, I want to guide your eyes to this Please. item in the inventory of Morphling. Tell me what's going on here. We just yeah. answered a question about this the other day. What? It's the so evil. good. It has games for it. It's the same I, reason why Tiny's like like has a couple of good targets. So does Morphling in this game, honestly. Okay. I think it's okay. Plus, you're getting the meta damage, right? So basically, because you're against the TB, you morph into him, you get meta, and then you're still Morphling. Like, you get the benefits of both types of Morphling. Because of, did they just get that? No, I thought the arrow stole it. Very close, but no. <laughs> so, nice reality rift back to safety, or a uh, dark rift. Dark light! Okay, Fnatic get away with that though. Nice easy Roche, they secure the Aegis. G not able to react in time. I guess my concern with this build for the Morphling is how well is it going to scale in terms of the straight right click carry. I mean, yeah, it's got some merit, but this Terra Blade is really coming right, online. Which Terra Blade? Could you clarify? The, the dire Terra Blade. Oh, okay, thank you. The, the Terra Blade <laughs> with the BKB and Manta style incoming. Oh, that one. Yes. Yeah. The gotcha. one that will actually be able to kill things with right click. Oh, one. I see. Hey, I mean, look at this guy. He's got like 200 damage still on that Morphling. I think at back. 600 HP. Yeah, that'll be fun <laughs> in this next team fight. It's soloed by the lion. I, I mean, I, I don't know that it's the wrong choice. It just makes me a little bit nervous, and I, I think it puts Fnatic on a little bit more of a timer. Certainly, some pressure on Abed to find some kills. You know, yeah, for uh, sure. E Blade is not a farming tool. Let's see if they can find this kill. It's taking a while. Yep, Ice 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 will be able to live. Now the Moonlight Shadow to disengage as MP jumps forward. Good lord, that is... That's hard to believe. Looks like it could be a fake back, though. They uh, break the Blink Dagger, and... Okay, that's it. What was that, like four heroes? Yeah. Trying to throw damage on this guy? And the Crimson Guard is done, so it just gets more difficult here. But oh. he's going to try and create that big buffer zone that's going to allow Abed to take advantage of that with the E-Blade. I'm worried about that last hit disparity, too. Right now, Arteezy is about 100 more CS than the Morphling. Very significant at 24 minutes. That is true. Uh, Arteezy has been just completely off the map, it feels like, this game. Throwing out these illusions, but just hiding in the jungle. Not really giving any moments to the side of Fnatic. But they're the ones with the Aegis. They're the ones that are trying to push forward into this mid lane. But Arteezy just cuts the wave with illusions. Much like last game, where they were just kind of controlling from the high ground. Or last series, rather, when they were against forward. They just kept, like, playing the high ground on the Radiant side of the map when they were dire. They would just camp all in here and constantly, like, cut both waves. Even if they're a little bit behind, try and force you into bad fight. That's what they're doing here again. They're just trying to cut that middle lane so they can't actually use this Aegis to the advantage in the mid. They want to force them to go for this tier 3 top. And you can see Fnatic are just like, eh, that doesn't feel too good. I don't really want to be pigeonholed in from behind with a shrine there. There's going to be Centaur who can just use the Stampede. They're going to close the gap on us and Pinsir. Feels dangerous. So despite the fact that they're playing the worst part of the map right now for EG, somehow they're still dictating the movements from Fnatic with an Aegis. If Fnatic did just try to smoke through the enemy jungle, and as you're describing, no one from EG was that even remotely nearby. Jabs did just go and like guard the wave a little bit though, and this time they don't have the illusions there, so EG lose control of that middle lane. Still two full minutes on this Aegis of the Immortal for Fnatic. Pretty good window for them to try to make something happen. But if they want to take some fights, it's going to have to be on EG's they, terms. They're not fighting these bold moves. I mean, you think of this like a Shadow Blade this tiny. There's no coverage in behind that tier 2 in the mid lane. And maybe they have an opportunity to try and find some mail like that. Now EG making this rotation back towards the mid. S4 hiding in the trees. Maybe thinking about jumping over for this initiation. I don't know if Morphling is the target they want to start on. MP's got the big burst though, and Sumail has no defense items. He's sitting at 1k HP, Echo Saber and that blink, and Sumail dies instantaneously if Fly can't react. Arrow actually connects onto Ice Ice Ice. No follow-up. I got it, guys. Don't worry. EG's just gonna let that uh, tier 2 go. Alright, one hour tower remains for EG. Things looking very good for Fnatic here. I don't think they have the best high ground defense here from EG. It's certainly the place you want to fight, but it's going to take like a really good weave and then pretty much all on S4 to find a massive stomp. 
even after the stomp, he still has uh, retained that position in the front lines. Try and give some space to Arteezy. Something that got a little bit difficult last game in some of the mid-game fights when he was playing on the Arc Ward and we kind of needed that similar bit of a buffer. They were still able to carry that one to the victory. Insane fashion. So, um, I, I think you, maybe you uh, were on to something with this E-Blade because uh, he hasn't used it and he just picked up a BKB. That doesn't really feel great. It doesn't help yeah. you farm that fast compared to something like a Manta. He already has his Manta and starting to close in on the Scotty. About halfway there. So the BKB does open up some more teamfight options for the Morphling. Closing in on his this level 18. It's just... Who gets stunned first, man? 10 second VKVs. Of course, the edge remains for Fnatic, but only for about 10 more seconds. This Aegis is actually about to expire. This could be a bad fight for Fnatic. Well, Gotta find that time on the vein. Jabs goes down straight away. The Aegis, it's a matter of seconds, and go there it goes. Buyback now used by Jabs. Stampede already been deployed for EG. So far, so good for this dire squad. They'll just disengage after forcing that buyback. That'll be the end of the fight. Morphling did use that 10 second charge. Got Ooh. nothing out of it. Uh-oh. Danger here for Fnatic. That is a pretty costly in those moments. Just a single pickoff on a support, losing your ages just as it's timing out. And as you said, the 10 second BKB without it being expended there from Arteezy. And this will probably be enough time that by the next fight, Sumail should have his own BKB. And mm -hmm. just avoiding this moment where MP should have been able to get some kills on him. Or at least was hoping to. MP just stalled out real hard this game. And he's below DJ at this point. Yeah. Just can't find kills. Uh, Terrorblade controlling the map, and the rest of the Evil Genius is just playing in a complete ball, not allowing the solo picks to happen. Yeah, I don't really know that it's MP's fault. I think it's more of a testament to the way EG e have been playing and positioning or themselves. preparing against the, you know, first pick Tiny. That too? Yeah, I, I mean, they knew coming into this series that that was going to be a, ma a major hero for Fnatic. Surely done some homework here. That Aghanim Scepter on Centaur also going to be a really effective tool against the potential burst from this Morphling. Smoke, though, from EG, looking for the wraparound. Ice, 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 the only target they see right now is Phoenix makes it back over to the other side. Well, EG will be pretty cautious, not going to force it. They won't find the angle and instead just head back to their side of the map, maybe looking for a Tier 1 up top instead. Again, though, they're just leaving these RTZ illusions, trying to cut, and yep, free one. Radiance top tower has fallen. Another rather relaxed game. I'm sure uh, they're not feeling very relaxed. But of course, the lower bracket came away from heading home. I mean, you look at that net worth graph, and it's very telling of how tight this game's been. We're about at the 30-minute mark, and it's never been more than a 2,000 net worth lead either way. It's all coming down to the team fights. Evil Genius is coming in here. Invis on that big BP target. They want the Underlord, but is it the target? The Avalanche connects on quite a few. The Stampede forward. Ice 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 goes down. No buyback. Now it's MP on the defensive. Phoenix does not dare go for that Supernova. Where's Abed? Where's the Vision? They can't get in. It's again going to be a free pick. And even a regen rune was ready there for Sumail. G not going to continue pushing up top. They'll let the creeps do the work for him, and instead they just rotate Radiance mid and cut that creep wave. I mean, they're fully aware that they cannot fight with it. It's, like, it's going to take a hell of an initiation from MP or some incredible egg from DJ to make that work. See this Roche timer here in about 15 seconds. Certainly something EG will want to grab for themselves this time as they finish off that tier 2 up top. Oh, this terribly just applies so much of the same logic as the Arc Warden for Arteezy. Talked about how he felt like he can just win the game no matter what when he's playing Arc Warden. He always has a way to do it. And you can kind of see the same things that he's doing on this terribly, right? He's cutting waves. He's controlling the game from a single hero like this. And there's a reason this guy used to play Nog all the time too and why he looks so dominant on it. Cutting waves is just so much of your power and uh, like it takes away your options as a team when you just don't have a creep wave going somewhere for Fnatic. And they're just constantly getting out pushed. Yep. Lincoln Sphere, third item choice for Abed. What do you think here, Trent? Do you like this on the Morphling? I don't think he has a choice, really. It kind of becomes this default item versus the TB. It's like way too risky not to have it. And then there's also a, a Lion here, too. So yeah. there's two really good games for it. For sure. Still just rough to see their, their big carry take two defensive items alongside the E-Blade. I, I would agree. It seems like he's forced into it, but... But, I mean, that's kind of the point of Morph, though. Like, it's fine. That's, like, one of the benefits of this hero, is that you can afford to go for these defensive still items damage, and yeah. still have so much. Especially against a Terra Blade, it's true. Yeah. Dab's moving in here, but they have the vision. 
so EG, patient. They want to take this fight. Reflection from Arteezy to start things off. S4 just jumps in onto the Phoenix follow up. Finger don't bring him down. That's a gem that's hit the deck. Now it's on. will buy back. EJ yeah. back into the fray. EG very spread out right now. Maybe oh, Sumail going to be left behind. Yeah, and that's going to be Abed to jump in and finish him off. All right, well, if they get the Roche because of this buyback, uh -oh. that's going to be just fine. Mid lane. Oh, okay, they're that's use the a little better rip. than a Roche. Fnatic ready to put big pressure on. There's no buyback on Sumail, and they're going to grab crit on the back line as MP jumps in. They will use the Glyph. A double catapult wave. They decide to make their play on S4. Hops in, though, gets on four. This could be huge. EG need to hold here. They've lost EJ. That's a dieback as Arteezy pops the BKB. Scotty online doing big damage to the back line. Jazz trying to move his way into the tree line, but he'll fall. Arteezy still repelling the likes of Fnatic right now. It was a good play, but it looks like it's going to backfire as now Ice 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 gets brought down. Fnatic oh. completely repelled. <laughs> they don't even get the tier 3 below half health. That was a bold move, not going for the road. Maybe they just thought it wouldn't be up at that point because it was one of the earlier spawns, and they just saw a moment. They've been frustrated, I'm sure, by all this creep cutting over and over, but a replay is that, yeah, this is right where it happens. It's like, okay, let's go. This looks really great. Like, they have these morphling illusions from the morph to TV coming in, the double catapults. Marana's down, but there's still Centaur. Beautiful pick on the crit as well. You've got this 5v3. Everything's coming together for them. It's like, how could this possibly go wrong? And then Daddy's home still has that big BKB. And then S4 just creates so much chaos from the high ground. This reflection going to work on the side of Fnatic. Four heroes stomp and that moment where they see the raid boss and Fnatic make the call to scatter and uh, does not end in their favor. Hard to run away from the Terror Blade once he's got that Eye of Scotty up. Of course, as you can see in the picture in picture, that is a Roshan secured for EG. Oh my god, Aegis the levels. for RTZ. 20 TP, the reflection cooling out with an Aegis and a Scotty. Uh, I believe uh, we usually call that coming online for the heroes. Yes, uh, RTZ has uh, plugged the modem in. It's and great. He is surfing the World Wide Web, baby. Nabed's on dial up, I think. <laughs> He's still trying to get this Lincoln Spear. He'll get it now. Okay. Yep. Hanging about here. Bit of a bold maneuver here, but he has the gem. He knows that they shouldn't have another one by now, at least. Of course, when a war gets dewarded nearby, maybe it's time to go. S4 now, getting very close to the Agonims on the Centaur. Alright, there's the line from DJ. He's circling mid. Saying this is where we're going to try and create a fight. And they can bait ice. They've got to do something here. This Morphling is geared up for pickoffs, and they need to find them. TZ's Getting a bottling here, dropping, grabbing uh, his dragon lance back up. Oak rotation now, Fnatic charging up the high ground. They drop the ward before they head up there, playing things very safe. But all of EG in enemy territory right now, again, forcing Fnatic to take this Radiant's fight in a really attack. unfavorable scenario. I, I like how Ob has been using these TV uh, illusions, though. Like, he's pushing out that top lane with them and trying to give them at least some sort of force of pressure Radiant's onto the side of Evil Geniuses. Not responding here, though. Radiant's Easy now in the mid. Scouting things out a little bit as that tier 2 in the bottom lane falls. EG look like they want to go high ground, force a response out of Fnatic, and there will be the TP's home. They're just abusing this Aegis on the side of our T's. Like, the way they're positioning him, he's the closest person to the side of Fnatic at all times. Yeah. Still a nine second BKB charge on this oh, There it is, the big Aghanim Scepter on Centaur War Runner. These fights, very difficult to execute. 40% damage reduction for four seconds. And what's terrifying is that they're a burst based lineup, right? Like this Tiny and this Morphling feel like they've, not only in heroes, but itemization, they've gone full out for it. Yeah. And MP, despite eventually picking up that Shadow Blade they were kind of hoping for, hasn't really found too much with it, and they gave away their gem too. The only are picked up for Sumail too. This might be a 2-0 here. EG climbing so quickly in the net worth. Now a 9k lead after what looked like things could be figured out here for Fnatic. Just feels like Fnatic are running out of options. They're trying these smokes and EG is just not giving them anything. Playing so tight right now. Set up onto S4 with the Yule Scepter, but the rest of Fnatic does not want to initiate on that. They see the Terrorblade nearby and I think That's... they're going to have to let this Tier 2 go. 
tired to believe that's the real deal when he just runs in like that. But again, just kind of hoping to create an engagement with this Aegis. to how powerful they are right now. The straight Daedalus queued up for Arteezy. He wants some big damage. Well, there's big damage in the Rose Pit. They back away here too with the DD. I'm on the Aegis. About a minute 15. Still a pretty long window for EG to continue maintaining map control. Further this net worth advantage. Crit closing in on his Eon disc as well. Give that line a lot more survivability. Yeah, I love this item on this hero. Feels really good when you're playing like Lion or Shaman to have it because honestly your damage isn't that important. It's just making sure you get off your stuns, all your spells. And a hero like Lion can definitely play around uh, that Eon Disc proc so you can still get some damage out. Feels like Fnatic are just stuck behind this line right here. Not much map control for them right now. Yeah, they're trying to find this sentry and exactly where it is. It's uh, getting their war, but now they'll see it down the low ground. Slow and steady for EG, waiting for this opportunity as the Aegis comes close to expiration. What does Fnatic do here, Trent? They need to find some sort of pickoff on the like, even just crit or fly would be great, honestly. Just create a, a bad fight for EG, just something where they don't have everything available for them. Maybe you just catch them in their split. Like, you can see the way that they're applying pressure to all three lanes. Well, that means that someone's got to be at least a little bit away from each other. So you got to take some sort of a risk. Uh, either that, or you just hope for DJ to carry you with some crazy egg. But, I mean, he's against two of the best Tough. heroes in the Marana and the Terrible for dealing with it. So his hero just won't be enough. They yeah. both have BKBs. Virtually impossible for DJ to have a real impact on these team fights. And then you start looking at the rest of the lineup and you're like, okay, well then they need a instant burst from a tiny, but the HP, it, it's starting to build up on these heroes. I mean, even Dazzle's up to 16.22 at this point. It's not a simple play for MP anymore. Yeah, definitely not. And the drawbacks to the tiny is you keep going back to when that snowball doesn't get rolling. Almost feels like a different hero with the amount of pressure he's able to put on. Just managed to clear out that bottom wave, but EG just choking out the map. Being so patient right now, waiting for this opportunity. There now they the go. smoke from Fnatic, realizing they have to do something That's to the break this Arteezy. game open. The smoke gets popped. They do go in onto Arteezy. MP connects to the avalanche, but they don't want to run up to the high ground. They know the Dire have a lot of friends nearby, and they will not pursue. Well, that was their moment. I used to use the Sunder, very least. Yep. 40 second cooldown. <laughs> okay, so that's why. It's like, really? I could have just healed you, dude. That seemed really unnecessary. <laughs> like, now we don't have Sunder for 40 seconds. Jabs in the danger zone. Almost gets interrupted by crit. But we'll be able to complete the TP. MP jumps out. Sentry Ward's gun almost gets caught. Arteezy looking to punish that, but won't be able to get there in time. In light shadow. Oh man, I'm going to be hearing a lot about this E-Blade later, I think. It's just like, I mean, it's not even his fault, really, in terms of the itemization. They just never had a chance to use it. Like, if you're going to build this way, you got to at least get your game plan going for it, and they did not find it at all. Ice, 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 now outside of the base. This could actually be the fight. EG are not grouped up, though. Only three heroes nearby. Fnatic jump out, but it's going to be a stampede from S4, and it will easily disengage. Perhaps a little frustrating for EG right now that they can't really do much to crack this high ground, but the farm is continuing to skyrocket in their favor. Now 13, 14k net worth. Ice 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 walks up to the high ground. He will get caught by an initiation. Arteezy with the BKB on, brings down jabs. Ice 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 with the Dark Rift trying to head back. He might be able to survive, but his teammates just head back to the high ground. Well, trying to make a, a go there, and they forced out a meta, they forced out a BKB. Now feels like a good moment to smoke the Radiant team, compared to that last one at the very least. And it's a 15k lead, 16,000 experience as well. Six, 6,000 experience, sorry. That would be a little ridiculous. Big, it was big difference there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just slightly. G may be thinking about uh, waiting for next Roche. We'll see what that timer looks like in about 45 seconds. A little, little, little ways to go there. I, they're in no rush. They, they know that they're just completely squishing the growth of Fnatic. 
TJ. This is all he can do. I'm kind of surprised they didn't just get... Like, they didn't even go for like a Hex play or something because they don't really want to force that fight as EG. Sorry, sorry. It's pretty far out of the base. Stampede can be used. Make sure Arteezy stays safe from that combo of MP. This Tiny just gets destroyed. There's an egg. Yes, there is an egg. Was, <laughs> Very astute, my friend. <laughs> that was a bit of an odd one. Did not achieve much, and that's going to be on cooldown now for another 100 seconds. Tiny does have a buyback available. Arteezy actually getting a little bit low. Where's Fly? Come here, Fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get... There it is. Hey, there we go. <laughs> oh, what a life. The life of the Dazzle. I mean, it is true. It took him a long time to heal him up like that. So, just keep going with Fly. It's fine. I also love that Fly doesn't waste his fear of missile carriages. Oh, fast Roche respawn. Almost immediate. Tiny dead. Ichi definitely feeling very safe about this. They'll walk into the pit. Of course, Roche 3 here. Refresher shard and cheese for the taking. What's up, Ice Frog? Trying to give us a quick date here or what? So, uh, a double put into a 2 0. Is that what's happening with such a quick. Why Aegis? is this Ice Frog's fault? Because okay, so he makes Dota and he made. Roche respawn that fast. That's why. Ice. Yeah. Okay, so ice, ice, ice. Stepping a bit far forward here. Does have a dark rift. I think should be able to survive. Man, and that's nice. Nightmare. He does a nice save. No, this is going to end up being a save, though. Phoenix comes swooping in. Ice, ice, ice. Still holding on to the ultimate. Jabs does get brought down, and the Underlord soon to follow suit. No mana, no HP, and no options. The instant buyback. Roche has already gone down. Aegis and Refresher on the Terror Blade. And right now the cheese in the inventory of the Marana. What's Abed up to? <laughs> what are you Well, doing? you Get know. Scotty? <laughs> living life. Okay, so buys the Eye of Scotty. And now does not have buyback gold. <laughs> Free tank up item, potentially. Scotty, BKB, Lincolns. 21k. Now the net worth favor. Buyback from Ice 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 definitely uh, not helping on that front. Fnatic at least. Desperation mode for Fnatic starting to set in. BKB picked up on Tiny. Yep. Hey, I mean, you have to give them credit. They've been holding this high ground for a while. Maybe that's more so to the patience of evil geniuses, but... They have kept themselves in this match. They've kept a hold of their shrines by not giving up a tier 3. At least they're creating opportunities for some sort of like a, a wraparound or a TP or some buyback moments. Something, unfortunately for them though, EG just not giving a whole lot. Almost perfect positioning so far. It never feels like our TP is truly in danger. S4 finds the catch onto the Underlord. Remember, he's just fought back. If they bring him down here, this will be huge. Dark Rift gets used. There's the Yule Scepter to buy himself some time. He heads back to the well, but the tier three's fall, and Jabs gets left behind. Got the egg too. Double buybacks now. Abed, where are you? We need you. You are the big hero for Fnatic. But the racks, they, they're gone. Glyph's still available, but the top lane is going to get cleaned up. EG making this rotation mid. There is a Sentry Ward down. MP jumps out onto Fly. Does bring down the Dazzle, but it's a dieback for Jabs. Arteezy in the front lines, repelling the likes of DJ and MP stuck outside of the base. The BKB not going to be enough to keep him alive as S4 catches him with yet another Blink Stun initiation. Tosses him back, but it'll be another kill for oh, Arteezy. And the too. A great Sunder onto Ice Ice Ice. Now he's on the run. The Pit of Malice might be enough to keep him alive, but will it be enough to save the base? It's a 5v3 right now. Fnatic low on resources as this tier 3 mid takes a lot of damage. EG just back in right here. They're going to use the cheese, hand over their cheese. They want to keep this Aegis nice and strong, keep this meta rolling. So it still has half duration remaining. And looking to put an order of demolition upon the mid rats. Slow, methodical execution here from EG, just ripping apart the base of Fnatic. Mid lane of Barracks now destroyed. Still a range standing up top, but EG are going to keep this train rolling. The tier three's already gone down in the bottom. Fnatic need to make this one final stand. If there was ever a moment, oh, this is it. But S4 jumps in. Morphling gets caught. He's low. His hands in the cookie jar, and the jar will shut. Buyback used. EG maybe still can be repelled. RTZ oh, has the Aegis, the grave on two HP. There's the Sunder. Ice 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 gets brought down low again. Bane has respawned. Terrorblade yeah, takes the E-Blade to disarm. Slows He's him down just a little holding bit. holding BKB at this point. Like, he popped absurd. it so long ago that it's returned. 
another shallow grave available now. Fnatic just have no way to stop this damage. EG focusing almost He's not even exclusively going on objectives here. RTZ does not have the Sunder up. Needs to be a little bit careful. Oh. Soon to be 25, but hey, there's Fly with the Shallow Grave. Hey, right, toss him over to the desert. A minute left on this Aegis. And still that ranged barracks up top, preventing the Mega Creeps from being secured. Another Sunder. <laughs> Thanks, Fly. Yeah. But the Doing mobile God's fountain. work here, Fly. Now RTZ just heading up to the high ground. Still range 40 barracks. seconds left on the Aegis. Huge damage here. Sunray ticking him down, but Megas will be secured for the evil geniuses. Alright, hey, got the Dire Courier though. You know, take your victories. That's a little pick-me-up. This could be the Aegis. Now the Supernova, they're gonna try to focus it down. It gets popped straight away alongside Jabs. Terrorblade gonna be coming back to life from the Aegis of the Immortal. Dark Rift back to the well. It is cast by Ice 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 and he keeps his carry alive. It's a cute play. They're playing for survival here, right to the very last building, it looks like, from Fnatic. Another morph into the Terror Blade. Looks like it just might be enough to actually send them a bit back here. Okay. With elimination at least on the line. Fly. You're going to hang in as long as you can. It's not over until it's over. In theory, still possible for EG to toss this away, but it would take one hell of a miracle for Fnatic. The bold hypothesis. Sumail jumps in alongside the Lion. Abed, he turns into a TB, but MP's gone down. It's Terrorblade on Terrorblade action, but RTZ's hit the gym, and he's a bit bigger. No glyph for these Tier 4s. EG still playing very cautious, not overcommitting here, respecting the power of Fnatic as they push forward. The final moments are upon us, Trent, as the Underlord gets brought down without buyback. The Morphling gets hexed, Jeez. pummeled with snowballs, and the GG will finally be called as EG eliminates Fnatic from the KL Major. I'd say EG have had some, some tough games so far this tournament. They've had matches where they didn't look very coordinated or they couldn't quite find like what they were looking for.